Dear 16 year old me, this is still me. I mean, this is you. Only now you or we were 29, which may sound really old to you, but it shouldn't. Don't look at me like that. 29 is not old. You're older, cooler, more self-assured version of yourself is here to share some wisdom with you. First, you will not marry any of your high school boyfriends. Not one of them. That's not to say that relationships that don't end in marriage don't have any importance, but it's just to put it in a little bit of perspective. I suspect, actually I know, that you are using boyfriends as security blankets in social settings because you are terrified of high school. You are terrified of being in big groups. You're scared of saying the wrong thing. You're scared of not having anyone to talk to. You are just downright scared. You feel like everyone else is tuned in to the same wavelength and somehow you are not picking up the same frequency as them. Don't worry so much about not fitting in. Don't be so afraid of not finding your people. The truth is that you're just somebody that's kind of slow to make friends and you need to learn to trust in your process and that you will find the people that are the best fits in your life. I happen to think that this time where you're feeling offbeat from everybody else is a time where you really hone your skills at zeroing in on the people that are going to make the biggest impact in your life. And you're going to find them at other high schools and you're going to find them in college and at law school and beyond. And I promise that throughout your life you are going to surround yourself with some super cool ladies. So don't worry about that. I do wish that you would care less about what people thought of you. And I wish that you would define your worth less by how other people perceive you. You don't need to pretend to like certain things just to impress people. I know it's tempting to pretend like you like sports. You don't, you're not fooling anybody. Or cars or weird alternative music just to impress a boy or a group of girls or whoever. But the truth is that you like Harry Potter and researching serial killers more than any of those things combined. And I happen to know that Harry Potter and serial killers are actually going to be way more important and relevant in your life in 13 years than any of that. Yeah, I mean, you have, you have a pretty cool life. And if you really focus on the things that you enjoy and that you're truly into, that will do worlds of good and developing creatively for you. Which speaking of, stop telling yourself you're not creative. In fact, stop telling yourself that you're not good at things or capable of things in general. You are one ambitious and practical little nugget. And I appreciate that about you, but your head can be a really mean place sometimes. And that stops you from branching out and trying new things. So I wish that you would be less of a perfectionist and less afraid to fail because that fear of failure ultimately stops you from pursuing your passion until way later than you should. So spoiler alert, your first big failure is about to come in a year and a half and it's gonna make you so sad. And now it's gonna sound so silly, but in a year and a half, you get waitlisted at Harvard and Yale and you think this is the end of the world. It's not. Turns out going to Penn works out just fine. And it's, it's a little bit hard to unravel how your life would have worked out if everything had gone according to your plan. You're a little control freak and you still are. That's okay. Give yourself a little credit though. You are more than just a series of brass rings and things on your resume. And that's not all people care about and that's not all you should care about. So embrace those failures and try to relax a little bit. It'll all be fine. Don't be so polite. I mean, be polite, but try not to do that thing that girls have a tendency of doing, which is to try so hard, so obsessively not to let anyone feel uncomfortable. And by that, I mean, don't be apologetic for your successes. Yes, don't define yourself by your resume or your brass rings, but don't downplay them just because you think that's what you know nice girls should do. And by the same token, when people are mean to you, like really mean, there's gonna be a girl that you know, just tries to humiliate you constantly and an ex-boyfriend who is a completely misogynistic jerk and it is not up to you 
to be the peacekeeper or to try to placate them, it's all right to be a little bit of a badass sometimes. That's something we're still working on, but we're getting better. Lastly, you're gonna become a raging feminist. I know, this is surprising, and it's gonna take you a really long time to admit this because of all the reasons that I've just explained that we both know. You're afraid boys will be put off by it. You're afraid girls won't like it. You're afraid that you're not smart enough to understand the issues, but you're gonna get over it and you're going to form opinions and you're gonna be able to begin to articulate them and you're gonna start engaging in broader conversations about what feminism means. And you'll feel good about it and it will feel right because in 13 years, you are going to be pregnant with a little girl and you're going to hope that when she's 16, that she realizes a lot earlier all the cool things about herself. Dear Me was launched by YouTube in honor of International Women's Day earlier this month, and it encouraged YouTubers to post a video that's a letter to their younger selves talking about issues they had growing up. Check out Danny Danger and Danielle's videos on our Weird Girls channel, and also be sure to share with me advice that you would have had for your younger self, or make a video and share the link. I would love to see it. If you haven't already, make sure that you like this video, that you share it with everyone you know, and that you subscribe to the Weird Girls channel and visit us at www.weird-girls.com. The end.